In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I make a delicious cauliflower head that is baked in a cheesy white sauce. It is so delicious, it looks great, and hopefully all you beginners out there will be able to see how easy it is, make it yourself at home and impress family and friends at your next dinner. G'day everybody, welcome to my Aussie gardening kitchen. If it's your first time here, my name's Darren, but please call me Daz. And this is a recipe that I enjoy doing all times of year, but at times like Christmas, it's an absolute fave to have with a roast dinner or a roast lunch. But anyway, that's enough talking about it. Let's actually have a look at how to make it and let's get stuck in. So what I've actually done is I've made this because I've got a cauliflower growing outside that's getting pretty old and it's getting a little bit ugly. So, hey, why not make a recipe out of it and show you how I do it? So I'll go and get the nice fresh cauliflower and bring it inside Give it a good wash in a nice clean sink. Make sure the sink's sterilized and nice and clean beforehand. And then if you're doing something like this with produce from home, really make sure that you get in there and clean it properly because you might have earwigs and other creepy crawlies hiding amongst the cauliflower, which I actually did in this case. You don't want to have those little extra bits of protein floating around inside it. So just make sure you clean it really well. So once it's cleaned, I get it onto a chopping board and give it a bit of a clean up, a bit of a trim. I'm not too fussed about the way it looks, to be quite honest, because in the end, it's going to be covered in a white cheese sauce and people are not actually going to see the surface of the cauliflower itself. So I've got some boiling water here. It's coming up to a nice rolling boil. I get some salt in there just to season the water a bit so we can get a bit of seasoning into the cauliflower as it boils. So we drop it into the water, pop a lid on, and we're going to boil that until it's about, say, three quarters of the way done. Now, I like to boil mine beforehand just to guarantee that the end product or the end cauliflower is going to be actually cooked and people aren't chewing on something that's a bit too crunchy. While that cauliflower is in the water boiling away, we make the white sauce, and it's just a basic white sauce where I get my flour, get my butter, make a roux, and then I'm adding milk to that and making it into a nice thick white sauce. Now, it's up to you as to what sort of thickness you want, but I prefer a really thick sauce. And you'll see the end result with mine as to why I went with a thick sauce. So I'm making my white sauce and I'm putting in a little bit of nutmeg, a little bit of black pepper, and I'm not going to add salt because I'm going to be adding cheese to this. So that's going to be fine as far as the salt level goes in the flavor of the sauce. And it's going to get really, really thick in this measurement that I've done. So it's just a matter of just adding some more milk to it as I go along, just to thin it down slightly. Once I'm satisfied with that nice thick sauce, it's really gluggy, but it's going to be perfectly fine. I'll put in some cheese, a good whack of cheese. Now, when it comes to cheese, the world is your oyster. Well, cheese. Oyster? Cheese? Anyway, what I'm getting at is you can pretty much pick whatever cheese you want, really, and flavour it the way you want. In my case, I'm just going for a good old Australian tasty cheese, a tasty cheddar, one that the kids like here. All the family like it. So in goes the tasty cheddar cheese. Give that a mix around. And that's going to make the sauce a little bit thicker and a little bit more elastic as well. Get that mixed in, make sure it just all melts into the sauce completely. And there I have it, I've pretty much got my sauce. If I need to, I can add a little bit of milk and adjust the thickness again to thin it down a little bit. But as I've been saying, I want a really thick sauce and you'll see why in a minute. Now that the cauliflower is done, we take it out and put it into a side dish just to drain the water out of it. And I give it a once over just to make sure there's no boiled bugs or creepy crawlies floating inside. It's perfectly fine. It's been cleaned thoroughly. I go back to my sauce and in my casserole dish, I'll put a nice big lump of the white sauce in the base. That's just so I've got some white sauce at the bottom and the cauliflower is going to sit on top of that. So the cauliflower comes out into the casserole dish on top of that white sauce with the stalk facing down and the head facing up. And it's a cute little thing, this one, but hey, it's got a face that only a father could love, a face, a head. Anyway, it doesn't matter because we're going to cover that in sauce. 
Now the rest of the white sauce, I get that and place it on top and just coat it almost like I'm icing a cake and get it all the way around the edges, all over the top, looking for, you might get like little air bubbles, popping the air bubbles and filling those gaps in. Sometimes it might fall into some of the gaps of the little cauliflower heads. So you just push a little bit more and fill that in. And then the idea that I'm after here is that the cauliflower head is compact still, sitting in the casserole dish, and it's gonna have a nice coating all the way over, just like a vice to cake. And again, very thick, so it doesn't go runny and collapse into the bottom of the dish. I actually want it to sit on top and stick to the cauliflower, and you'll see why. Now that we've got the cheese totally coated all over that cauliflower head, it goes into a nice preheated oven. It's 180 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit. I'll put that on the screen right now. Now we'll let that bake away and the cauliflower has already been cooking and I've put it aside earlier. So it's slightly cooked a little bit more under its own heat. So we don't need to really focus too much on cooking it. We're more getting it to just finish off, come up to heat in the oven and have a nice color on that white cheesy sauce. Now after about five to 10 minutes, it's a good idea to just have a look in the oven and see if you've got a hot spot where it might be coloring on one side. So in my case, I've got a hot spot on the left hand side of my oven. So I'm just gonna get in there and turn it around and that way it's gonna ensure that I'm going to get a nice even coloring on the top and all the way around. So after about 15 to 20 minutes, you could see that it was nicely colored and ready to come out. And in that time, I know that it's actually come up to heat and it's ready to serve. So I've taken it out of the oven and got it ready to go. And it's just a matter now of getting a spoon in there and dishing it up when ready. As you can see here, I've got my spoon in there and I'm just taking a piece out to serve. And with this particular recipe, as I said, I want that sauce thick. I don't want it drowned in a white sauce. So the idea here is you're going to break off a nice big head or maybe a couple of them with a spoon and that's going to transfer to your plate and it's going to have the white cheesy sauce stuck on top. And you can see in this picture here, it looks quite nice. It's actually a really good cheesy brown white sauce coating. And then if you do want some extra white sauce, you've got the stuff that's in the bottom of the dish. But if you do prefer a lot more white sauce, in your recipe, or in your dishes on the table, by all means, just increase the amount of white sauce that you make and bake it in a bit more white sauce. As I said, this is a side dish that you can serve any time of the year with a hot meal. It can go beside a stew, a casserole, a roast dinner, a good steak meal, you name it. There's so many things you can do and have this as a side dish. Or if you like, you can make this as a main dish and just have this as a main dish yourself. The choice is yours. There's so many options once you know how to make this and then just go for it. It's so much fun and there's so many ways you can have this with something else and make it interesting every single time. Now, if you are watching this video and you're after Christmas recipes, I really do recommend that you check out my glazed ham video. It is incredible. I will show you from trimming the ham all the way to glazing it and serving it. And if your mouth does not water, I'm sorry, I don't know what else I can do. It's incredible. And also the chocolate ripple cake. In Australia, we've got a famous dessert that we do here with some biscuits or cookies, as friends say overseas, with a bit of whipped cream and sugar. And that's just about it, really. And you need to check that out. That's on my channel as well. Thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind checking out this video on the screen next, I would love you to do so. Thanks again for everything. Have a great holiday season if you're watching this around the holiday season. And hopefully I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.